up YouTube. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm doing a video on installing a diesel heater into your camper trailer. Uh, it doesn't have to be a camper trailer. It can be an RV or a van or whatever you're living in. Uh, it's pretty generic. Um, I needed a heating solution uh, for when we go camping, uh, particularly because when we go camping, um, it's in the colder parts of the year and um, it's when you can light a fire and that kind of thing. It makes camping enjoyable. But when you sleep, it can be pretty cold. Um, so I bought a unit off eBay. Uh, it's got a diesel tank and it comes with all the stuff. It's pretty cheap. And um, yeah, you can generically fit it into any camper trailer. Um, most layouts inside of the camper trailer are similar. So um, I'll go into that uh, a bit more about where you can place it and that sort of thing on the inside. Anyway, um, it, you don't need that many tools. You, you just need a hole saw and basic can tools. Um, the unit itself just looks like this. This is a 2.2 kilowatt, as I mentioned. Um, it comes with the unit itself, a wiring harness, and a bunch of other gear. Uh, the unit itself, uh, sort of a long tube, has an inlet end um, that recirculates air from inside the cabin, and an outlet end. Um, it comes with this basic wiring harness, um, a control panel that has just a heat control, and an on-off switch. Uh, it's pretty simple. It is lit up by LED. Comes with this diesel pump and a whole box of fittings, including your exhaust, your intake pipe, the tank, uh, a plate. You'll see on the floor, so <clears throat> most camper trailers uh, have a boxed up section uh, like that. Um, and it's made of wood normally. And that, I think, it's usually empty. So that's a perfect position to place it. Um, this is a Star Vision. Uh, I've seen Black Series and all that on the inside and they're the same. They've got like this empty spot. Um, this bit near the door where the control panel normally goes is normally empty. That's where you, you've got a couple of switches there for lights and that kind of thing, but most of it's empty and that's where I'm going to put my vent and my switches. The plate on the floor came with the kit and um, <clears throat> it's basically a template for um, the inlet, uh, the inlet, sorry, and the exhaust that um, come out of the bottom of the unit. And so what we have to do is cut a hole in the floor and um, poke the inlet pipe and the exhaust pipe through the floor so that they exit underneath the camper trailer or your RV or whatever you're fitting it to. Uh, I've made a couple little uh, notes for myself which way is up, um, but I basically traced around it um, took to the floor with a box cutter to start with just to get through the vinyl. The flooring in my camper trailer is like, um, it's like house flooring, it's the hard wearing vinyl but when I cut the first section out I realised there's an underlay and it's made of really hard rubber and it's got some adhesive on it. So what I had to do was box cut around that again and then chisel out this adhesive glue and, um, and the underlay until it revealed the bare metal floor. Um, <clears throat> now, you'll see in this picture, and I really, I considered not including it, but someone else might make the same mistake. You don't need to cut out the holes through the floor like this. You just want to cut a big hole around the whole, um, the whole lot. Um, you don't want to drill these individual holes like I have. Uh, it's unnecessary. You can just cut one big hole because the template uh, next to it, uh, is essentially what's going to um, meet up against the unit, which you'll see later on. But uh, I just place it back in the hole to check everything. Uh, what I've done here is test fitted the exhaust pipe there and um, I've made some notes for myself on which is the exhaust port and which is the fresh air port. And this end here with the black um, end is where the hot air comes out, uh, which these things might seem uh, apparent at the moment, but this unit, uh, being Chinese made, I assume, it's a copy of the Webasto. It doesn't come with instructions. It doesn't tell you which one's the exhaust, which one's the intake, where the air goes or anything. I had to work it out myself. 
Uh, it's got a big rubber gasket, and that's very important. That seals up against the plate and the floor to stop fumes from coming back in. Um, the exhaust exits out under the floor, and it's got an exhaust pipe, and the placement of that is very important. Um, that's the biggest risk with diesel heaters is fuming. You need to be very careful with where you exit the exhaust pipe and um, and which direction it's pointing and there's going to be heat coming out of it and fumes. Um, so you don't want to just point it anywhere underneath the camper trailer because if there's you're on a night that um, doesn't have much wind or whatever, you could fume yourself and that's a huge risk. That's the intake end up there. That's where it recirculates cabin air, so it sucks it in there and it blows it out the opposite end. <coughs> Pardon me. So that's the general layout. So what I did was I applied the template on the bottom side of the unit and uh, just double check everything pokes through nicely. And um, then what I did was... Uh, Put the nuts so it's got there's some nuts um, some spring washers that hold the plate in place and then you connect up the intake which is the black pipe and the exhaust which is the the stainless steel pipe there using clamps now you'll see the little other bit poking through that's the intake for the diesel so that's how the diesel comes into the unit now the instructions don't tell you but you get supplied with a really long piece of rubber hose and you need to cut it you cut about two or three inches here and then you poke the plastic into it and secure it like so with the uh, hose clamps provided. They don't tell you that um, but yeah you need to work that out yourself uh, if you don't have the instructions which is why I'm sort of making this video to start with. This is the underside of the camper trailer so I made sure and you need to make sure that where the exhaust and the intake poke through it, it's not near a chassis bar or anything like that. Um, so just double check, but that wheel arch is usually a safe place. But depending on your chassis placement, you want to make sure they don't uh, poke through and you know hit a chassis plate because then you're going to have problems because obviously you can't cut through a chassis plate, um, a chassis bar. Uh, so the diesel gets pumped through by this electric diesel pump. And so you need to put the rubber and the and the uh, hose clamps and that kind of thing in as so. Now you'll notice there's a bolt there, and that's where um, mine was already there. The, that bolt is part of my chassis, and there wasn't anything connected to it, so I got lucky there. You need to consider whether or not you want to drill a hole in your chassis, tap it, and then put a bolt in to hold it. That rubber mounting comes with the unit and it's uh, it's obviously to hold the diesel pump um, but yeah it needs to be bolted somewhere so I bolted mine to the chassis bar and then you assemble it like so so there needs to be pieces of rubber coming out of each end of the pump and then the plastic line needs to come in like that uh, you'll see uh, the filter which is that little uh, clear thing there neck in between two pieces of rubber that's just to filter your uh, diesel and um, you'll see it's got um, it is marked with an arrow uh, when you get it um, but I used a texter and just marked it again to make sure I got it the right way around when I installed the filter because it is a uh, it is a one-way thing it's got an inlet and an outlet uh, so that's the unit there and um, that's the vent that the hot air comes out of and uh, there is a concertina piece of pipe that uh, joins the two and it's held in place using hose clamps. That uh, that vent can be rotated as well to change the positioning of your hot water, um, hot air outlet uh, so you can blow it to different parts of the cabin. And the switch uh, lights up at night and you can adjust how much heat you get out of it obviously through that control panel. <clears throat> Um, I felt that I needed to put it near the door so you could just adjust it or just lean in and change it. Um, that's the concertina pipe there and uh, it's sort of metal on the inside and sort of like paper on the outside I guess it feels like. Um, you'll see the wire there poking through. I had to cut that to get it through the wood. Likewise um, with that I've drilled a little pilot through the floor and that's for the electric 
um, diesel pump. You, I just drilled like a seven mil hole th straight through the floor, and then um, I, I actually got a little screwdriver and uh, picked the pins out of the connector, and then poked the pins through the floor, and then put the connector back on underneath, so I didn't have to cut it for that one. But for the actual um, on-off control, I had to uh, cut, completely cut three wires and then rejoin them. I, I just soldered them and put some heat shrink um, on the wires and then taped it all up. Um, it, I felt the need to, I, I didn't have to do this, but I felt the need to wrap it in some heat tape because that control is very close to the uh, heat outlet and I didn't know how hot the heat outlet would get and I didn't want to risk uh, melting the wires so I just wrapped them in heat tape. So that's what it kind of looks like <clears throat> um, with the on off thing bolted in and, and everything. Um, so as I was saying before that can rotate uh, that vent which is cool you can uh, point it to wherever you want and the kit actually comes with two vents and a T-piece but I didn't want to do two outlets or anything like that. The kit also comes with this little harness here, which it's pretty simple. It's just red goes to the positive of your battery and black goes to the negative. And um, in case you're wondering, the system is um, set up for 12 volt. Um, I'm sure you can probably buy 24 volt systems if you've got an RV or a um, caravan or whatever you're putting it into. But uh, this particular one's 12 volt. It's simply got uh, two wires to power it up. So red's positive. That goes uh, through some, um, I think it's six six gauge wire. I bought a roll of, and um, yeah, you just solder it up and put some heat shrink on it, and then tape it all up. Uh, if you've got the, if you're putting this into a camper trailer like mine, you'll have this middle section here where there's normally a table, and then it pops down and can turn into a queen bed or whatever for your kids or whatever. Um, so I ended up buying a one meter piece of aluminium tubing. And I run my wiring through that tubing uh, from the heater side going through there because my battery's up here in the in the top left corner of my um, camp trailer, and that just looked the most standard to me. Like I just wanted something that didn't stick out. <clears throat> I could have drilled a hole and put it through this section here, but my kitchen's there and it's got a, a pull-out um, roller, like a you know like a slide, and I didn't want to risk the wiring getting crimped or or damaged. Um, which you know can start a fire or whatever so yeah uh, please subscribe this is my five can jerry holder and I also integrated the diesel tank um, so I welded this up and then at the last minute I added on a, the end section here um, to hold the diesel tank um, you could just run this unit um, off a di uh, diesel jerry can if you wanted um, it would want to be one of the sturdier sort of ones though because um, yeah, you've got to obviously um, put a line through it to go from, you know, let the diesel out into the pump. Anyway, this picture here, that's the tank. I filled it up to this neckline and I ran the heater for 12 hours uh, from 7 o'clock at night till 7 in the morning. It was a cold night. We went camping and uh, it used 1.2 litres of diesel. That's how much it took for me to fill it back up again. So um, it basic, basically uses 100 mil an hour, uh, 1.2 litres for 12 hours. And to me, that's, that's greatly efficient because that means you can go, you know, six, seven days, whatever, off, off grid and your heater will still be going um, so long as your battery can keep up. Um, the, but the fuel side of things is just, and that was on the lowest setting, uh, which I'll talk about later. Uh, but yeah, pretty efficient. Um, um, I'll do another video for the jerry can holders, but um, essentially I've got the diesel tank on the end there. Um, you just take the cap off and fill it at the service station. And I've got these tamper-proof um, lid things for my jerry can holder that I sort of um, made up. That's the battery that I run the heater off, as well as my lights and everything else. Uh, it's a very small battery, which has since been upgraded, but um, roughly, um, I think the unit uses about two to three amps per hour. Um, 
for the diesel uh, heater and <clears throat> because I, I ran it for one night and um, and in the morning there was like a little bit of power left but I had lights and a few other things running off it so I, don't, I couldn't say for sure how many amps the unit draws um, if you subscribe I'll uh, when I do the Jerry video I'll um, I'll take an amp reading off this unit and um, and I'll let you know how many amps the unit actually draws because it's not in the documentation it's it's not anywhere I couldn't find it um, so that's the hole that you, you should cut in the floor um, to more easily feed the pipes through um, I cut the individual holes originally but this is a a quicker and more efficient way of doing it. It's just cut one big hole in the floor. Um, yeah, it's it can be a little daunting, but yeah, I just used a grinder and just cut straight through and then cleaned it up with a Dremel. Um, so, uh, I mean, let's talk about the size of the unit. So this is a 2.2 .2 kilowatt, and you can see the camper trailer. It's an average size camper trailer. It's a forward fold, this one. Its interior sort of airspace would be similar to most other camper trailers. The 2.2 kilowatt unit is overkill. I had it on the lowest setting. It just it pumps the heat out. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I didn't have a temp gun or anything, but it's it's warm in there. Um, we had it on the put the kids to bed. Had the, had the lowest setting, and um, yeah, I. It would be nicer if I had got a smaller unit. So if you've got a camper trailer and you're thinking about it, um, maybe go like a 1.5 kilowatt and that would be perfect for this size. 2.2 would be good for like a Toyota coaster or a bus um, or a mini bus. And then if you've got a... I've seen 5 kilowatt ones on eBay as well. That would be perfect for like um, a large bus, um, maybe a really big caravan, like a 3-ton caravan or something like that. But uh, the 2.2 is really overkill for a camper trailer this size anyway thanks for watching please subscribe